well, this is a set of, this is a video along with incoming signings that I planned for a while, and I was trying to space the content out a bit, but we kept on being busy and, and things kept changing. But here it is at long last. Five Sunderland players that I would let go in this window. Um, I know that I'm going to say let go because, to be honest, there's there's a couple of uh, obviously a couple of uh, sell options and a few loans in here. Um, so I know loans you could argue is kind of cheating because it's not really you're not letting a player go permanently. But to be honest, I think it's just the four, five players that I would be most likely be content with departing Sunderland this window one way or another. Um, but there you go. So this is just going to be a quick for hopefully a quick fire video or quick enough for you to tolerate it. Uh, about five players. I would like Sunderland to let go one way or another this summer. And very quickly, before I forget, as you guys know, 30% according to the analytics, it's got better. Around about 30% of people who watch aren't subscribed. Um, so if you think I've earned a sub from you and you can help me get the 5K subs in the near future, hit the subscribe button. would mean a lot. Anyway, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. Number one, Leon Diaku. Um, now, this has been reported to potentially be in the works. So by the time this video goes out, you might have already gone. But at the time of recording, as soon as I hit record, he hasn't left yet. So for me, I think we, but Leon Diaku, I think is just simply a case of we wouldn't have bought him permanently had we not had the obligation to upon gaining promotion from League One over a year ago. Um, and it's not his fault, really, because it, I, I just think, I think he did all right in League One, personally. I think a lot of people make him out to be the worst thing since sliced bread, which I don't think he is. Um, I think there is definitely some technical ability in there, but I think it's a limited level at the moment. And I just think he's not, he's not going to, and put it this way, you did all right for League One, but he's nowhere near good enough for the championship, unfortunately. Um, you know, I think that I, I don't like people to judge players too quickly, but I think with Leon Diaco, we've seen enough of him now, I think, for people to make a judgment on him. Um, <clears throat> you know, but for me, I think Leon Diaco is just a case he just didn't fit the English game, unfortunately, or at least doesn't fit the English game at the level we're at and isn't good and, and probably will not be good enough for the, what we want to do moving forward. And he needs a move abroad just to get his own career back on track. Now, against him, seems a canny lad. Good luck for the rest of his career. Number two. Now, this is the second permanent departure, and it kind of kills me to say this because I'm a big, big fan of his, but we do need to be a bit ruthless here. Bailey Wright. I think Bailey Wright is one where I'm a big fan of him, as you know. I've, I've, I've hopped on about him regularly enough on the channel, but he's someone who was a key figure in us getting promoted to the championship, and I'm very appreciative of that. And I think his leadership skills, especially at League One level, I think are very underrated. Um, I think he reads the game superbly. He's an excellent header of the ball. He's a, he's a commanding presence in the back line, and I love stuff like that in a defender. But however, as Sunderland have, have, I think Sunderland have evolved um, above Bailey Wright's level, where we're now looking to try and go up to the Premier League next season. It doesn't mean we will go up, but that's what it looks like we're aiming to do. And is Bailey Wright going to be good enough to do that? No, sadly not. Um, but if he does go, and I think he probably will leave permanently this window, with a couple of with, with Sealt and Triantis signing in particular, um, I think that, you know, he goes with the best wishes or should go with the best wishes of every Sunderland fan because, you know, I have nothing but respect for the guy. And for his own move, he, he deserves to be player, playing. If someone in League One signed him, keep him fit, top two level League One centre-back, I'm convinced. And if someone like Rotherham go for him, which they've been linked with, I think he's good enough probably for a bottom half championship side or a side looking to stay up. So, again, leaves with me absolute best wishes. Now we get into the loans. Three, Joe Anderson. This one is kind of the shortest of the bunch, really. But, you know, Tony Mowbray already alluded to it. It looks like we're going to be loaning Joe Anderson out. And it's one of those where I think Phil Smith of the Sunderland Echo said that we spotted a player in there worth taking a chance on. Um, and if that's the case, he probably needs to have a loan out to get used to, get accustomed to first-team football. So one for the future, but right now needs to go out on loan, especially with all the centre-back options we've got. Number four, um, Jewison Bennett. Um, Jewison Bennett is one. Now, this is an interesting one because, as I said a year ago, Bennett's come over from Costa Rica, and it's a completely different culture in a country, different type of league that he's used to. And he's still, what, 19 probably at this point? Um, I think there is something in Jewess and Bennett. I really do think there is, but he's very, very raw. And I think he needs to go out on loan to just kind of harness that rawness a little bit and just sort of develop a little, develop a little bit technically, I think. Um, it has to be the right move. It has to be the right culture. It has to be the right environment for him. But I think a loan move would really, really benefit him. Um, if we end up keeping him, I wouldn't be gutted. I wouldn't be annoyed about it. Um, it might be that if this, this is the best place for him to continue developing, fair enough. But I think a good spell out on loan, particularly maybe someone like a League One club to get a bit of physicality in there, I actually think would really do him good, personally, anyway. 
And the fifth and final option, now it was debating between him and another player who I might quickly mention at the end of the video, but the fifth option is Jay Mateti. Now, I personally like Mateti. I do think there is something in there. However, you've got to look at it. We've just signed Bellingham. I know that some of these are attacking midfielders, but still, you've got Bellamy in there, you've got Embleton who could be in there, you've got Pritchard who could be in there, Dan Neal, Pierre Equa, Corey Evans. I know Corey Evans isn't always fit, but we've got the options there, and I just do not see Jamie Tetty getting in ahead of them. And for me, providing they'd want to get him back, I think Plymouth would be a good solid option on loan again, because now they're in the championship, it's a step up, it's a logical next step, he knows the environment, he knows the culture, knows the manager, um... And it's in the championship. I think that's where he needs to test himself now to see if he's good enough. Because um, either one way or another, if, say, next season we don't go up and he does and he smashes it in the championship, he could be a very handy player for the following season. Um, or if we do go up, we can make a profit on him. So we'll wait and see. But there you go. Um, Jamie Tetty, I think, would... I like him a lot again, but I just don't think he gets into our midfield at the minute just because of a lack of... just because of how many options we actually have. But those are my five main options. The other player I had considered putting into this, and this might be harsh for some people, is Elliot Embleton. Because I think Embleton is one where I'm a bit indifferent towards him. I think if we keep him, fair enough. He could he could have an impact on, on the um, off the bench. But if he left, I wouldn't be devastated because I think you've just got to ask the question, is Embleton good enough to try and gain or get us promotion to the Premier League? But, you know, hopefully he has a blind next season and a lot of made to be look like an idiot. But anyway, guys, I will love you and leave you there. But I tried to do a quick... Five, op five players I would let go from Sunderland this summer. Comment down below respectfully as long as, um, as long as it's respectful. Who would you let go? What would your options be? And I will do a video on five signings I want Sunderland to make this summer. I've got a bit longer probably to have that video be valid. But anyway, love you and leave you guys. Take care. Stay safe. How are the lads?